So to understand how all of these different computers and devices can communicate clear across this planet, we really first have to understand protocols. What are protocols? How do they work? And how do they facilitate computers talking and devices talking from all around the world? So during our discussion, what we're going to start out doing is we're going to talk about what is a protocol. So we're going to define what a protocol is, and I have some analogies that we're going, I'm going to give that will help you understand and give you an idea of how protocols work. Then next, we're going to talk about protocol concepts. We're going to talk about some of the concepts that go into it. And then this is going to get a little more into the technical side of it. We're still going to take a really high view, a high level of it, but we're going to start going into what the concepts are that allow this communication to happen. Then we're going to get into some common protocols. It's really helpful to start understanding what different protocols are out there and how they help facilitate this communication. And then finally, we're going to talk about some protocol suites, some protocol, some stacks of protocols that help this and facilitate this that commonly go together. So we're going to go talk about these different uh, items here. So let's go ahead and get started. So let's get into the question is of what is a protocol and really understand what a protocol is. So I have a couple of analogies for you. So let's talk about communication rules. When we talk to other people, we have a set of rules that we that we go by. For instance, when we walk up to them, we probably don't just start talking about something random. We usually do a little introduction and we say hi to the other person. And so there is a, a set of uh, ways that we open up a conversation and then there's a set that a way of going through that conversation and the way that we convey information and then we close out of the conversation we usually don't just turn and walk away from that conversation there's a usually a way that is a polite way to walk away from that conversation and so there's a set of rules whether written or unwritten that we use to communicate when we're talking from person to person same thing if we were to write a letter to them if we were to write a letter or an email to somebody, there's a formal way of doing it and a very formal way of addressing somebody if that's the type of mail that you want to send to somebody. But if you're writing a word, word of encouragement or a love letter, then you're probably not going to be as formal. So there's a certain sets of communication rules and protocols in the way we address things. So that's what a protocol is. It's a set of rules, communication rules. So I'm gonna give an another analogy that's a little bit closer to how a computer actually operates. And this is where we're talking about telegraphs and Morse code. And so with telegraphs and Morse code, there's just a single wire that goes between from point A to point B. And on one side, you have a little switch or a little button that you tap, and on the other side, it makes a sound. And so somehow we have to convey information through just ons and offs. And so that's essentially how computer computers communicate also. It's all bits. It's either a one or a zero. And so with a telegraph, one person on one side needs to be operating off the same rules as the person on the other side. And so they need to know what a dash dash uh, you know, if you send a Morse code dash dash, the other person on this other side needs to understand what that is. There's all sorts of rules that are set up with telegraphs. For instance, once, a, once again, what language are you going to communicate across there using? And here it's Morse code. But it also could be what is the voltage of the lines going between the two devices? Because you need to have an understanding of what voltage that you're going to work with. So that way, the hardware that you create on each side that's going to represent that, that's going to, dis that's going to um, communicate with that, they're going to have to operate off of those same principles. So here is another example of how there is a set of rules that govern how that communication is going to happen and how, it's going to how two uh, people on each side of that are going to communicate back and forth. So even before computers existed, this word protocol existed. And really, a protocol is the official procedures and rules 
either for government operations or during diplomatic occasions. Um, and so protocols existed as a set of rules during these, these ceremonies or during the, these operations. So that way people, uh, there's a certain flow to it, there's a certain procedures to it, there's a certain set of rules to it. And so it's the same thing when, it when we talk about computers and how computers communicate. It's a set of rules governing the exchange or transmission of data between devices. And so that's what we're gonna use going forward is protocols is the set of rules that govern the exchange of information between devices. So here is an example. We have two computers that are talking here. We have one with an IP address of 10.41.42.35 and another with an IP address of 172.16.33.4. These two devices want to talk back and forth and then we have to have to talk across many different networks through here. And the hardware could be different yet they still have to have the same set of rules as to, to facilitate this communication going back and forth. And so that is what a protocol is. So then the question is, who makes this up? Who makes up the rules? Well, there's lots of different organizations that make up these rules. So I've listed out just a few of the organizations here of, of some of the organizations that make up the rules that govern how these computers and how these devices exchange information. Although there's a lot that aren't listed here, here as well. In fact, you know, Cisco, hey, like my videos? If you could hit that like button, that really helps me out. Uh, it was just one example of a proprietary um, organization that creates their own proprietary protocols. So often what they'll do is they'll take some of the protocols from some of these other organizations and they'll improve upon it. And then they'll, put, they'll use that on their devices to improve functionality of their devices. And sometimes other, uh, other um, uh, brands will be able to plug into that and use that while other times it's just Cisco and just Cisco equipment that can use that because it's proprietary. So that is some of the organizations that make up these protocols. So next what we're going to do is we're going to get into more about protocols and what some of the common uh, rules are that govern these different protocols.